It's time for the Gizwiz with Mavs Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1625, recorded Thursday, June 1st, 2017. Viva tar and feather your photos. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have three more gadgets from the Baby Show and my new theme for the crappy corner. And let me tell you, it is crappy. Of course, your video's also next on the Gizwiz! It's the Salem Show with Dickie D. And OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs. Growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! Now! It is time for the Gizwiz, and here he is, the master of gadgets, Dick D. Bartolo. How are you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir, and you? Doing good as well. It's been a, uh, a fun week of, of getting stuff done, haven't had to travel anywhere, so stayed home over the holiday weekend and just got work done, and it was great. It was really good. Oh, good, good. Yeah. How about uh, you? Yeah, I did do anything for uh, a while? Uh, this the same as you. Uh, for some reason, we had to get the next issue of Mad together early. I think our art director is uh, going on vacation or something. So did some work, did a tiny bit of boating, um, and also it was not a particularly great weekend uh, here in the city. So Dennis and I and Charlie uh, had an indoor picnic. Nice. <laughs> Watching the rain on the in the outside on Memorial Day. Yeah, it's raining over yeah. here too. It's definitely that time of the year that all the rain comes down i have friends coming over this weekend and it is just rain 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 all the way up until they leave and then and then it might be nice after that but well i would uh try get some new friends it seems to me i know yeah. they're just gloomy they they come by <laughs> there's this rain cloud over them all the time <gasps> oh my oh my gosh oh what my are you gosh. gonna do? i saw i saw on the internet that they're clearing out everything from Radio Shack on the internet. Now, are you too young to remember the Radio Shack catalog? Uh, the catalog, yes. But the I, catalog, I yes. do remember the Radio Shack oh, days when it was when you could go in and buy transistors and go Oh, in okay. And, yes. You know, yes. when it had and you they, you had employees that would know what was up and that you could you could bring them some electronic and they might be able to give you some good advice on how to fix it. That's yes. not true. Yes, anymore. yes. Not like la later Radio Shack, when which was a I, cell phone warehouse. Uh, yes, exactly. They they opened one of the first new Radio Shacks a block from here, yeah. and I was so excited. And I went to the opening, and I thought I thought this was Radio Shack. You're right. They had phones, phone cases, and I said. You know, I used to come here for transistors and parts. And she said, oh, it's all still here. And I said, really? She said, yeah. So she brought me over to this corner of the store with a monitor and a stool. Yeah. <laughs> and you sit on the monitor and you find what you want. And then they point you to a gigantic set of drawers with all the part numbers on the front of the drawer. And then you hunt through the drawer for what you want. And I'm figuring this is not the fun Radio Shack where you would look at, at a little envelope and go, wow, what does this do? Yeah, exactly. You had this whole is shelf. Is this LED good? Yeah. Can I yeah. use this LED on my caboose? Yeah, exactly. Or, oh, that's where you buy those buttons. I've seen those <laughs> buttons on my products before. You buy them here. Exactly. And it makes exactly. me so frustrated because at the same time that Radio Shack seemed to be going downhill – there was this resurgence of the maker movement of ras yes. raspberry pies and, you know, Arduino boards and all of this, uh, you know, getting into hardware again and people and breaking down barriers of these gadgets aren't just gadgets that you buy and are passive. You should be able to get something you hack. You should be able to be able to make something yourself. And at the exact same time, Radio Shack was hitting the dumps. It seems like where they originally were from was making a huge comeback, and they never embraced it. 
No, I, you're absolutely right. If, you're if absolutely Radio right. Shack became the maker place where you go in and you have all the Raspberry Pi boards and and you can buy you know the capacitors and the transistors again and and you know or they had classes and teach children basic. You know that is a great idea. It's like make it a fair, is there. Make a fair shack. I think you just. Make a fair shit of merge with Radio Shack. It is so, it is the perfect thing for all the people who used to love Radio Shack. And also, I go into places like Fry's Electronics, and they have, it's not like these products don't exist anymore. I went to Fry's and I bought, um, it's actually sitting over here on the, on the floor. Um, I had to buy a uh, RJ45 connector crimper uh, so that you can create your own ethernet cables this is what I, I was actually just creating them over here on the ground um, this little device uh, you make your own ethernet cables um, and it's you why why can't I buy something like this you know at Radio yeah Shack? you know I don't even know if Best Buy gets down no. into that kind of nitty-gritty they don't stuff. and it's not difficult stuff you know it's like in fact I wish that modern cables nowadays were as simple as Ethernet cables, I had this lo gigantic, like 200 foot Ethernet cable, and I wasn't going to use it for anything, but it's still a great Ethernet cable. And all you do is slice off the end of it, oops, it's backwards, and recrimp it to be whatever you want. And then any length you want, yeah. any length you want, get the exact perfect cable. It's like this is just copper in here, and nowadays like no one does this it's just like so simple um so uh, i it, it does it does break my heart that there i f i feel like there is a place for radio shack sell this stuff teach people how to do it um and and come back in a large way but ain't gonna happen <sighs> they're now. not gonna listen to me <laughs> not gonna listen to me and then pack nw does you know have a good point is amazon nowadays most people are just going to go to Amazon or go online. But that's why I, I mentioned classes is it still, there's something about being in person with someone who's an expert and seeing something that you don't understand and being able to just quickly ask a question that you can't get through, um, you know, tutorials and, and things like that. So, <sighs> very, Good point. Very, Good point. Very frustrating. Um, didn't realize uh, it was so close to my heart. Didn't realize yeah, that was so... I didn't realize it either. I didn't realize it either. <laughs> well, um, all right. Well, we'll move on to baby gadgets. Uh, the final three gadgets from the big uh, baby show that was here in New York City, and we're going to start out with it's potty time. Not potty time. Potty time with a uh, kind of a neat gadget. So let's take a peek. Hey, Dick T. Bartolo, Mads Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz, One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're at Summer Infant, and we found a device that we must know about. It's like a miniature, it's a miniature toilet, right? My Size Potty, it's called. Oh, My Size Potty. My okay. Size Potty. And, so, and what is the object of the My Size Potty? My Size Potty is a realistic potty, just like the adult toilet that you have at home so you can teach your child just to sit on the toilet just like you're at, at your house okay so, and and do, does it really flush it has a real flush sound so the water there's not actually water flowing down inside but if you flush it it has that real flush sound to the to the toilet and the object is to get them used to the idea of eventually moving to the, the adult toilet correct yep. okay and does this come out or what is yes so this it? is um a removable pot that you're able to just dump the excess waste in the in the uh, adult toilet. Okay. This is a very very neat child who was who was obviously eating chocolate. At, <laughs> it's wonderful. And what does that sell for? Uh, between twenty nine ninety nine and thirty four ninety nine. Okay. And I see it's available uh, at uh, Amazon. Okay. And this was sort of interesting. What is this guy? This is the Pop and Sit Portable Booster. This is available at Target, and it's $34.99, well, $29.99 to $34.99. It has the removable dishwasher-safe tray. It has the harness here. It does come with adult chair straps as well. It has the pocket in the back 
They're able to put books or silverware in the back and it folds up nice and compact. And it does come with a carry strap as well. Um, and you have the shoulder strap that you're able to just bring around anywhere. It's great for camping, um, great to bring to grandma's house or even restaurants. Or, or in the park. It's a great idea. Absolutely. It's a great idea. And both of these are available now? Correct. Okay, this one on Target and the we other one? On Target, we do offer um, additional colors everywhere else. Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Metis, right? And the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. We'll find more stuff. We're here at the Baby Show, New York City. Bye. That's really nice. I really think that that's, uh, you know, I, I can just imagine going camping and then the frustration of like, ugh. How are we gonna? Are we gonna take the big booster chair, the humongous, <laughs> you know, plastic thing that's gonna take up the size of seventeen tents, and put that out there? No, let's bring the collapsible one. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. You know, like that would that. that would probably even work uh, with a kid at the movies. They would probably oh, yeah. be elevated just so that they're not, uh, you know, obstruct the person behind them. Oh yeah. But just about adult height, and it does come with straps. So if you go to visit someone, they don't need to have a high chair. It comes with straps, so it sits on top of a regular kitchen chair and then becomes its own high chair because of that tray that comes with it. Uh, I thought it was a clever idea. I actually thought the, the toilet's kind of a clever idea because instead of starting them off on a potty, right. it start them off on something that looks like what they're going to end right. up using. It's not scary anymore. No. Because you, you, know, yeah. you get that flush sound, which I actually thought was a good feature because that might scare a child. Now it's natural, you know, that it, you know, it's all, all together. Uh, yeah, I like that as well. A nice, you know, adult-looking potty. So that yeah. you don't start off with the cute one and then get terrified <laughs> by the porcelain one in the uh, in the actual. Bathroom. Are you still having nightmares about I that? I am. I can't. I yeah, tell you, those toilet—they look like mouths, <laughs> and it just scares me. I, I know. Still, I try not to go to the restroom when at CES when you're in there screaming. <laughs> it's coming at me. It's coming. I'm crying. At me. I'm just. <laughs> Chad, are you okay? Yes, it happens every time. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, man, blame the parents, right? I mean, yeah, you know, why yeah. did you got to put me on those cute toilets first? Now they now they know. Now don't, they know. Yeah, now. don't even start them off. Yeah, I like both of these a lot and also very reasonably priced, uh, in my opinion. Uh, 20, exactly. $26 on Amazon. Uh, for the uh, summer infant, uh, my size yeah, body. Except look, look at look at how you get taken if you want it for a girl in pink. What? Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes, twenty six dollars for the nor. But you know what? I would just stick with the white one because the white one's cool. gonna be yeah what you're gonna end up on. I don't know. Anyway, maybe you have so. a really old apartment and they installed pink toilets in it. I mean, that was a <laughs> maybe. thing in the sixties. Maybe. I also, I didn't realize that it has like a, a little it has wiper a, at the top. It has, it like, has a, a wiper, it, uh, not an automatic like, wiper, but a yeah. place for wipes uh, at in the top. Yeah. I assume that's uh, wet wipes sort of thing. Very uh, cool. I assume. I assume. I don't know. Child sold optionally. Child not included. <laughs> right. That's a different purchase. Uh, but I would <laughs> suggest the next day shipping. Otherwise, they're not fresh. Um, yes, that's right. Yeah, and then also here's the uh, summer infant pop and sit portable to booster in pink, uh, with eight. Oh, wow! From eight different sellers. Look at that. Eight different um, sellers. But yeah, I, I like. I really like both of these. I think that they're it, just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and, they're very clever. And, and the the I, I didn't realize it until I was editing the video, is that the the company that makes them is Summer Infant. Oh, and and so they sell them. Like when she was saying, uh, this is available at Target. I think she meant that only Target has like that light blue version. Got it. And it, and then Amazon has all the other colors. Yeah. Uh, I've no noticed thing. this actually. And for Target, I think it's smart, but it can be a little bit disingenuous because you'll see on the box at Target, only sold at Target. I've seen stickers on the boxes. I've seen it printed into the box design, and so you immediately think, "Oh well, I'm not. I'm not going to go look on Am. I'm not going to look online because it says that this is an exclusive Target product." Yes, exclusive. That's yeah. the word they. Yes. You know, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I guess I have to buy it here because it's only sold here, 
And then, yeah, you come to find out that, oh, yeah, the blue model is only the sold blue at Target. Is exclusive. And they exactly. got, yeah, because in the aisle, you think, oh, I'm, I can't search anywhere else for this. This is the only uh, place I can buy this. Um, yeah, I've definitely seen that um, a few times. And I guess it's smart on Target's, Target's point of view, just um, if you see that, if you're, if you're out. Don't, don't hesitate to look it up anyway online if <laughs> exactly. you're a bargain if you're a bargain exactly. hunter like me. Uh, I like um, both of these from summer. Okay, infants, good. Now the next one. But will it work um, in the fall? I'm not sure. Uh, it may the be what? only. It may these products may not work in the fall if it's just summer oh, infant. Could be. Just, just, could be. Just saying. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh no, that's okay. That's okay. So uh, you know, years years ago, uh, earlier this year, we did a. Uh, that Moxie stroller that was like seven hundred dollars from four moms. Well, it turns out there's a company that four dads started, and their idea was to reimagine traditional baby items for the modern world. Uh, so the first one that they decided to redesign and totally rethink is the high chair. And we're going to run the video. the The problem is for some reason the video froze uh, about three minutes in, but it's just when he's talking about the very last feature. So we'll get to see all the features uh, before the, the uh, video freezes. And this is pretty neat. And then we'll guess prices at the end. Here we go. Hey, TT Bartolo, Mads Madness writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv at the New York City Baby Show. That I saw this so thing fancy. on a pedestal. I think it's an astronaut chair for infants, but I'm quite sure I'm wrong. So I asked Mark if he could wait a second that we would turn the camera on and he would explain what it really is. So, Mark, you're on. Absolutely. Hey, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Mark from Bloom Baby. Uh, this is our Fresco Chrome high chair. Uh, it's the only high chair that goes from newborn all the way up until eight years. Most high chairs go from six months to about three years, but ours is from newborn into eight years. Another one of the unique features on this high chair is that it's the world's tallest high chair. It is the only high chair that reaches the modern kitchen countertop, which is a 36 inches. Uh, most high chairs just reach a standard dining room table. Um, so, well, you know, Mark, why would you want, want it to reach the counter? Because you want a uh, baby to be up at the kitchen counter with you and a part of the family meal rather than... Oh, I see. Okay, so the dining room, they, it would be one level and then you might be sitting on stools at a counter for... Correct, yeah. The modern, most modern um, kitchens have a kitchen, higher yeah. uh, kitchen countertop or breakfast bar as they call it in Europe. Um, and they are a standard 36 inches. All other high chairs on the market are designed for 30 inches, which is lower than that setting. The one unique thing about this uh, high chair is it does have a height adjustable adjustment that allows you to go to all of the different positions. The tallest position at 36, you can lower it to 30. And I see just squeezing the tabs on the There's side. Two adjustable handles on the side here for safety and allows you to very easily go up and down. How, do, how does the, the kid eat off this? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to show you the first position here is a cradle position. So before uh, they're eating up at the table just yet, it's in this cradle position. It's very unique. So zero to six months, they're at this position, which is raised up off the ground, away from the dirt, the dust, and the pets. Uh, and it actually brings you up to parents' eye level, which is really important at that earlier stage. But to answer your question, some of the accessories uh, after the newborn stage, you then go into the high chair stage. That's where you start to add some of these accessories that we have here, like this safety bar. And as I'm putting all the parts to, uh, onto the chair, you actually hear an audible click. So you, for safety reasons, you can hear the audible click and know that it's uh, been put together correctly. So I put the safety bar on now, and the next thing I'm going to put on is the uh, trays. Both of these trays are dishwasher safe. You can hear that audible click. This is the large feeding tray with a nice deep dish that holds on to your uh, Cheerios and your spaghetti as you take it to the sink. Uh, they're both dishwasher safe. Once this is in the dishwasher, you can then use this in, uh, in the play tray mode as well. Oh, it, uh, right, and, that's, it, and that's where it goes out. So I'll just tell you the other features are... There are hidden wheels in that base. I think you saw that uh, it's a single pedestal. And it, it is kind of unique that it, it kind of makes tilts all the way back so you can put an infant in it. So it's good, as he said, from birth to eight years of age 
from five a kid five pounds up to 79 pounds and now ladies and gentlemen the price it's gonna be expensive of of the frisco now i should tell you it comes in chrome but it also comes in enamel so uh but does it come in matte black that's really you know it probably uh uh, at the price they're charging it probably comes in whatever you want false advertisement i saw one that was gold in that video i want a golden i believe i believe that is the neiman marcus (laughs) version exactly yes that would be no, the Saks Fifth I, Avenue I, I, version. I think it is. So we're, we're getting, uh, okay, two grand, 1500 700 800 Again, 1500 uh, a 1000 2000 um, Okay, well, for the first time, the chat room is, is most of them are over, over. and a few, a few of them are right on it. So it sells for between 450 and eight hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, Matt, there you go. You wanted black? Oh, there. Yeah, there we are. This is there my color. Go. Now, uh, the price is deceptive only in as much as it Sorry. doesn't include the padded seat ah. because all the seats come in different uh, colors. So uh, I guess the lowest price one would be around five fifty. It would be four fifty. And then another eighty to a hundred dollars for the padding and the seat in the color of your choice. I gotta say, sometimes these, I would say, premium family products—they're right. a little gimmicky. I don't really like them. This one, I don't know. I really like it. I think that it's pretty nifty. It's you know, it pretty looks like nifty. I'm really if, uh, on if board. In the house, ha- yes. If you are in the house of tomorrow. Yeah. This would just fit in. It, it is form go. and function. I mean, the fact yes. that it, it goes way tall, the fact that it has this nice, I mean, I could totally see an infant, you know, you're spoon feeding them uh, in that uh, back position. It luckily lasts for up to eight years. This isn't a product yes. that. And also, you're feeding the infant, uh, you can bring the infant up to your height instead exactly. of you leaning over. It, it is intelligent. And, I agree. Uh, Sometimes I like of, to knock these. Like there was that cradle that was like crazy oh, the, the, uh, that had yes. the baby sleeve and like all yes, yes. this and, other and stuff. And it was like twelve hundred dollars. Exactly. And, like yeah. yeah, I'm not really into that. And this one though, I could I could see making an investment as a parent. Well, not an investment. Making that large of a purchase for something that would last eight years that would have Are these extra features. A hundred dollars a year if you get one of the top ones. Yeah. I I think that this is uh pretty nice and um I it looks sturdy, it looks strong, it looks practical, it looks nice. Yeah. And it, looks great. it has features it, that other high chairs don't have. Gotta say, I I give it to this one. Good product. Good product. Uh, all right, and then our final product is uh, kind of a, a, a an interesting product. It's a combination of you know Nespresso, you know that company they yeah. make. Uh, uh, we've covered them coffee. before. It sounds so familiar. Do they, yeah. do they make uh, know, the big they, espresso makers, or is that the yeah? They they, they make coffee pots that uh, use pods. Right. You know, like like a, it's kind of like a high end uh, K cup machine. Anyway, they got together with Gerber, and oh. they came out with this gadget. Oop! I can't click it. There it goes. Hey, Dick Bartolo, Mads Madness writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're at the New York City Baby Show. I'm with Shanita, and I saw this device, and I thought it was K-Cups for kids, but it's not. It's really unique, and Shanita's going to tell us what this does. So it's a great new formula from Gerber that actually is meant to emulate breast milk. So it changes in terms of protein, calories, DHAs, whatever the baby needs at the right time in the same way that breast milk does. And it also makes your life a bit easier by having everything in these awesome capsules. So now I'm holding one for a child that's three to six months, and it dispenses a seven ounce bottle for your child. And so basically you buy it depending on the month, how old your child is. 
And uh, what does the machine sell for? And what do the cups sell for? So the machine usually retails at one ninety nine, and the cups actually vary based on the age. So it goes from first month, which is twenty nine dollars, and up five dollars each month until the max is about forty nine. Okay. And is that twenty? Is that price enough cups for the month or a week? That would depend on you talking to one of our representatives in terms of what your baby actually needs or your pediatrician. There's 26 capsules in a box. In a box, okay. And just show me what you just made here. Sure, okay, so. Oh, no, we're actually not gonna but does They've it come in mocha flavor? It, but I could, oh, here we go. <laughs> so here is a bottle of our two month. So it's about, it makes five ounces. So what you do is you just take a capsule, you pop it in like so. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing this. She's doing it backwards, man. This takes yes. practice. Oh, well, it's actually, do you know, are you familiar with Nespresso? Yes. Okay, so uh, they uh, Nest, so it's the same company. Oh, it's the same company. Okay. Same designers. Yeah, so I'm looking for a larger cup, but it's hard to... You didn't take the bottle. This is actually adjustable. It's magnetic, so you can use whatever bottle that you like, any size, you would move it like so. Do we have a larger bottle? Oh, uh, yes, I will go get you one. Okay, thank you. And we're putting pure water in the top. Well, actually, this has its own water filter. Oh, it has a built-in filter. Oh, what a clever idea. Tap water. So, yeah, so should you choose to use tap water, it's totally fine, thank you. So we've got our larger bottle. It actually filters the tap water through for you. That is great. So we now, was she pointing at the cup, the K-cup that it will filter The K-cup has its own filter in it. Yeah, interesting. Once that's all ready, you have it light blue there. We'll press in the center, and that's it. You've made a warm bottle in under a minute. That is great. Now, this is available now? It is, yes. So it's available online at our website, which is babynest.com, Amazon, and in store at Babies R Us in Union Square. That's great. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, bye-bye. No Dick -bye. Bartolo, Maz Madness Writer, and the Gizwiz One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. Pretty neat. Bye. I'm, I need one. I mean, I'm, I cry all the time and I need a bottle. Um, wow, that is really, really, really interesting. Um, that's really cool. I, I like it because also I, I imagine that uh, I remember temperature. You know, I'm, I don't have a baby. I've only experienced through observation. But I know getting the temperature right, making sure that you have the right formula at the right time. Um, all of these things are difficult. Um, and to make it a, a lot simpler, I mean, that's what Keurig is all about. Not worrying about yes, the whole brew. Right. Well, this is a, this is a competitor to Keurig. Right, exactly. Uh, Nespresso. But um, yeah, I guess it's should. a great idea. Now, the thing I did not know about that I found out about reading the reviews on Amazon. Actually, it did fairly well on Amazon. It got uh, 3.9 out of 5 stars from 77 reviews and I believe it became available at the end of last year or early this year. So a lot of people uh, haven't bought them yet. But one woman said that if your baby drinks a lot of formula, Hi, my name is it, Sorry. It, oh, that's okay. It can end up being like a hundred or $200 a month for the cups. Oh gosh. Yeah, I know. So, uh, if, if, if this rings a bell with you or something you're considering, uh, read your reviews on Amazon. Maybe it's worth it to you that you, uh, it, it's close to, they say close to uh, breast milk, uh, done for exactly the month your baby is. The machine is $200, but the the pods could end up being as when she's saying thirty six dollars. I was thinking, well, it's not so bad for a month, but evidently, if your kid goes through that in a week, right? Then then you're in for like one hundred and eighty dollars, uh, right? Exactly. Or, it looks awesome. It it definitely looks like it would take a lot of hassle out of life and a lot of um, uh, what's the word? You would feel very secure. Secure, and then, and yeah. Then that you're getting, you know, exactly what your baby needs. Uh, you're right. It just looks very premium, very, very premium. Yes, and um, I like the idea that they put a filter in it too, so you don't yeah. even have to worry about the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Cool. And I don't know why you need it, but it's Wi-Fi enabled, and it sends you information about about the feeding. I and swear, the babies nowadays are going to grow up with. <laughs> 
all of the data, just absolutely all of the data. They're going right. to know exactly how many formulas they had from day one. Yes, yes. And you'll say to someone, hey, do you want to go to lunch? And they'll go, let me check my phone because I don't think I'm supposed to eat yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, my gosh. The, the I know. medical stuff. I think it's bad now. Can you imagine? Um, very cool. Yeah. Well. Anyways. Uh, so that is the end of baby, the, the two-week baby That was marathon. good. I liked all the that baby kind stuff. Of, it, was, it was kind of fun yeah. to see that technology is, uh, you know, an area I'd never think to look in. It just happened to see the ad, you know, the biggest baby product show in, in uh, on, they were saying in the U.S. And I'm thinking, well, this could be fun. And it really yeah. was. I agree. Yeah. I think uh, I love seeing new gadgets in categories that I've always known about. You know, I've, I've maybe dental gadgets will be next week or, you know, something, you know, just a category that, you know, you think you know everything in it. And now you, you have a new perspective on a whole bunch of gadgets from uh, that area. So I'm, I'm yeah. all for it. Definitely. Very good. And speaking of new area, we are in a new month. So, ladies and gentlemen, I not even I know no, what the new theme is. Crappy Corner. I have no idea what the Patreons and Chad have conceived for June. So, for June, uh, I had an idea that I shot by Dick to make sure that it was that we were all on board, and I thought of a I thought of a fun sort of different type of theme. And the idea is, you know, we've had themes about dog stuff, house stuff, uh, kitchen stuff, party stuff. Well, I wanted to see what gadgets we could find from instead oh, of- For other planets, gadgets from, from other planets. I needed gadgets. alien gadgets and you guys <laughs> picked, no. Uh, and, and so I wanted to go out and choose a store. Because I kind of thought that it was the five, I was thinking of the five below store and how we had so much fun kind of, you know, finding it and talking about it. And that was during the $5 and under month. And we had some products that weren't from five below, but it was kind of fun. And so I, I wanted to choose a, a national brand of store that almost anyone watching the Gizwiz could go in and also find the product that I did physically. Oh, that's a, yeah, okay. I thought that was kind of a, a fun idea. But I didn't want to make it simple, basically. I didn't want it to be Best Buy. I mean, of course there's going to be gadgets at Best Buy. I wanted to choose some stores that it's going to be fun to go into and try to find gadgets uh, in stores that you wouldn't think would be carrying gadgets. So uh, the ideas, the, the stores that you could choose from were a dollar store. So say Dollar Tree or Dollar General. Okay. Ross Dress for Less. A grocery okay. store, so Safeway. Oh, just Kroger, just a grocery store. Okay, a okay. grocery store, or, or pharmacy stores like CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, those sort of corner store pharmacy stores. Um, and what you guys decided was, drum roll, please. Funeral homes. <laughs> Funeral homes. No, uh, <laughs> pharmacy stores. You guys wanted me to go into Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid and find some gadgets. Uh, that you guys could buy. That's actually like, that's a that's a very good idea. Yeah. So this month's theme is gadgets found at pharmacy stores, and the first gadget. You know, sometimes we kind of make a joke. But sometimes the crappy corner gadgets aren't so crappy. I can definitively say this is one of the <laughs> crappiest gadgets we have ever covered on the Gizwiz. Is it, it a is, camera? It is a camera. So this is the Vivitar. V54 digital camera. This is what the packaging looks like. Comes in a blister pack. Inside, you get, of course, the camera. Okay. It's five megapixels. Okay. You get a little strap. You get, of course, the software and documentation. And you okay. get a USB cable. Now, caution, this is not a normal USB cable. This is a proprietary cable that can oh. only use with what? this camera. First off, the camera has, uh, it does not have any viewfinder. You, uh, it has a 1.5 inch screen on the back. And you can oh, okay. see right off the top, this is not 
any trick of the webcam. That is how oh fast the uh, live preview is before you take a photo. Okay, so you can see that if you were trying to capture an image, it's about, I would say, two frames a second, maybe. <laughs> Something okay. like that. Uh, the refresh rate on this, uh, on this live preview, oh, it just shut off. <laughs> you were insulting it. I was, apparently. It has, it has artificial intelligence and it's hurt. It, it is. Says, I, I hope that the batteries aren't, aren't dead. Uh, you use three AAA batteries. It has internal memory. There's no upgrading oh or gosh. changing the oh memory. Oh my gosh. Um, on, so it can take at, as much. Let's see if this turns back on. I hope that I didn't like kill it or something. There we go. Okay, so come back on. Um, here's what the menu looks like. There we go. Uh, it's a little blurry. Sorry about that. This first icon is the, is the mode. Now, there's menu, play, and left and right. So left and right, obviously, you select through. You would think that you would hit play to select this, and no. No, you don't hit play. Okay, well, maybe I hit menu to select this. No, no, you don't hit menu. Uh, you have to hit the camera button at the top, and then you can switch through the various modes. So you have camera mode, timer mode. So if you wanted to set it up, I, I don't think you can see anything here. I'll just w tell you. You know, uh, Chad, video it, mode. Is, it, is it that the Logitech camera can't focus on, or, or is the video so bad on the, on the uh, screen itself? I think it's the itself? camera that, that doesn't oh, okay. want to focus. So I think it looks it a little better. There it looks we a go. Better. A oh, there it goes. Oh, okay. There we That's are. So, so camera mode. so, so. Yeah, so, okay. so. Uh, movie mode, uh, multiple, like, continuous shooting mode, that sort of thing. Next is quality. <laughs> you would, you ob obviously, stars, uh, you see these stars, and right off the bat, you know, intuitively, that that is how many megapixels you're going to be shooting with, right? Oh. Of course, that just makes sense, right? I had to go look at the instructions to figure out what the stars meant. Uh, yeah, so this is this is quality. So this is we're, currently we're at five megapixels. If you click it, you go down to two stars. That means less, and then one star is just <laughs> VGA. You also have uh, like sharpness, and you have some other setting. You have um, what is that? 60 hertz versus 50 hertz. No idea what that is. And delete everything what? on the camera. So those are your options. Um, to take a photo, of course, by the way, there is already a, a dead pixel on, do you see that dead pixel right there? Yes. Yeah, there's already a dead pixel on the screen. Um, now, if you take a photo, so we're going to go ahead and uh, try to take a photo of my hand here. Oh, my gosh. There we go. Clicked it. Oh, and there okay. we go. Now, now we got the photo. That's the photo that, that it took. So if we hit play, we can go back through our previous photos. Sorry about this. I know that it's a little bit wishy-washy because the... Uh, webcam is, is so high up in the air and I'm trying to get it to focus here. Um, so that's, that's a, a f one photo. Why can't we go through our photos here? It's not, why? It does not want to show me my other photos on the device. Well, <laughs> no, I don't want to delete this. I hope this was fairly inexpensive. It was. Luckily it was pretty inexpensive. Um, did it just delete all of my photos? No. Oh my gosh, it deleted everything that I took before. <laughs> wow! Okay. That is so long. apparently, uh, buyer, buyer beware that it may delete all of your photos randomly. Um, let me, yeah. Oh my! I took photos of Charlie. I took photos of the cats. Oh what am I gosh. gonna do? Those were memories. Oh my gosh! Did you not download them? I tried, but it, oh, it okay. apparently deleted them. Um, okay, so okay. let's talk about capacity. I'm gonna go to the user manual. Uh, okay. to, now it claims on the top of this uh, hundreds takes over 100 photos. Uh, and it shoots video clips. And oh, oh, of, 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 of short length, I guess, yes, right? Yes, very short length. Okay, so you have, uh, here's the, okay, so it was 5 megapixels, 3 megapixels, and VGA was, um, was the options. Oh, oh you know what, Be Bleep Burp is saying, when you open the back of the camera, 
uh, that would have deleted the photos. That would make sense, I guess. That's crazy. In other though. words, they had they have no standby battery in there. I guess, yeah. You would think right. that. They oh would my use god, flash fifteen memory. photos. Yeah, and in high quality, five megapixel, you get to save fifteen photos. Now those hundreds of photos come from normal quality VGA, where you get one hundred and twenty photos. But you Which can is see not hundreds. <laughs> you're right, hundred ish. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, that also said, when I tried to get the photos off of the camera before, possibly I deleted all the, all the photos, and that's why uh, it was not possible to. Use the USB, plug it in, and I cannot get this to mount to the computer at all. I can, the computer oh, cannot. Oh, the computer doesn't even see it. Doesn't see it. Now, that may be because they recommend you use their software in order to... Uh, to download the images. And so I tried to download the software. Uh, obviously it comes on a CD, but like many people nowadays, I don't have a CD tray in my computer. Um, so this was useless. Uh, go to the website, they want a serial number for this device. I tell you, I looked all over for a serial number. There is not a serial number anywhere on this device. So I couldn't download it from their website. So I went and just did a Google search, which I don't recommend, because who knows what website you're going to be downloading yeah, yes, whatever absolutely. software for. But I was doing it for the show. Uh, there was a Facebook post of someone else who's having the same issue, and they actually linked to a zip file that was on the same URL that this uh, site was on. So I, I trusted oh, okay. it because it was hosted at that same URL. Uh, downloaded that. The first step, it asked me for the model number of my camera, which is the Vivitar uh, Vivicam 54. And in the list of, first off, it just gives you a humongous drop down of hundreds of cameras that Vivitar makes. The Vivitar Vivicam 54 does not exist <laughs> in that list. So in order to use their software to get my photos off their camera, it doesn't work because I can't find my camera. So I thought, well, there was a 56. Vivitar Vivicar, Vivicam 56. It's, too, it's only close two Close enough. Two, close, close enough, enough. right? Close probably work. enough. Didn't work. No, nope, not at all. Uh, couldn't find the, the camera after it was fully installed and all of that. Now we find out that it deletes photos if you happen to open up the battery pack. And I'll be honest, these photos are going to be really crummy. Between the... Um, they are. Between the refresh rate of the camera and all that so the can price we, can how we guess much, at the price when yes you talk? how much would you pay for a camera that deletes photos and you can't get them off of it anyway and it's only going to be about 15 photos in the highest quality mode that the camera offers i so, am not going beyond 1999 okay chat room you uh, six ninety nine says Martron. <laughs> Five ninety nine. Oh my gosh, twenty dollars. Dale is with me on twenty dollars. Dale Paco, seventeen dollars. Well, I will be honest. It cost me twenty dollars. Twenty oh, bucks. Okay. Luckily, it wasn't thirty. Wasn't anything like that. But twenty dollars for the Vivitar Snap a Pic digital camera. Oh, it's on Amazon. Conky is said it? it got two. It got two and a half stars. Good. It should have gotten less, actually. Is there a negative star rating on Amazon? <laughs> we need this. Uh, it's $26 on Amazon. Oh, my gosh. I would. Uh, buyer beware. Buyer beware. Do not get this oh camera. It deletes your photos. I will never get those photos of Charlie back. Um... Yeah, uh, absolute garbage. High definition video for crisp, clear That's picture. That's gotta be a lie. I'm right. so upset that I can't get the photos off of the camera because I can't tell what quality they are in the, on that crummy screen on the back. Uh, I am really upset that I can't get them off. I took videos, I took photos, I took outside photos, I took inside photos. I was ready to give this thing a full review. Then it deletes them all, so I can't I think give them you all. just did. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, well, that is the Vivitar Vivicam 54. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, never again. Oh, and get rid of the camera strap, too. Uh, <laughs> that is the crappy corner, so you can look forward to more crappy gadgets from pharmacy stores. Oh my gosh! I got, I got so in, involved in the review, I forgot I actually recorded a little intro for this month. Well, now it's technically an outro, so... Let's oh, okay, see. Yeah. This was me earlier today. Hey, Diggy D, so we're here in front of CVS because you guys voted and we're listening. So we're going to go inside and find whatever gadgets we can. So come along. Wish I would have bought that instead. Yeah. That would have been great. Okay, we got it. And that was it. That was, I just thought that was a fun. Little, okay. We went you know, just to the so streets. I, just so I can find it on Amazon. It was the Vivitar. What model? Vivitar, uh, five point one megapixel digital camera. The okay. model. I threw it away. Uh, is V fifty four. V fifty four. Thank you. Um, piece of crap. With that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Fog on. on. And it's kind of funny that our gadget warehouse gadget is about a camera accessories. So oh. <laughs> this is from Moses, Moses Tories, who is a big fan of the show. I think this is his third video, but he seems to buy more gadgets than we do. <laughs> but what, what he found is very unique uh, and we'll show the video and then we can talk about it. Hey, Dick and Chad. Love the show. Please keep up the great work. Thanks, Today man. Today I want to show you, real quick, a gadget I just got. This is the Mego Pictar. Uh, Mego Pictar, turn your iPhone into a DSLR camera, and this adapter works on the iPhone 6 Plus, 6s Plus, and 7 Plus. What it does, the idea is, you put your phone in here. It comes with a battery. There's a battery in here. You know, small battery. I forget what these are called, but... I, th I think they're CR123s or something and like that. You clip your phone in here. This moves down. See, this part moves down. And you slide it in. And you turn your phone into sort of like a DSL camera. It communicates with the phone with through its own frequency. I have no idea what frequency it uses. It doesn't use Bluetooth. It does not use Wi-Fi. It's really cool. It, you download the app for free. There's an in-app purchase for filters. I bought that for $10. It gives you, you know, like 10 or 20 more filters. And again, you slide it in. It lets you hold the phone real nice. It comes with this bag, a neck, uh, wrist strap, and a neck strap. And when you hook it up, all you do is run the app itself. This is for white balance. Oh, I'm sorry. This is for choosing your different modes, which is pretty cool. Do automatic, ISO, manual, sports, macro, selfies. It's really, really cool. Okay, let me put it back to automatic. This does the white balance, I believe. I'm sorry, hold on. This does the white balance, this knob right here, I believe. This You could do the half press with this, and this does, the front one does the zoom. It's really cool. I, I, I've only had it for a couple of days, and I love this device so far. It makes me feel like I, you know, I'm not going to drop my phone or anything. I hold on to it tight, and it's real nice. I'll do a few seconds of me shooting with it, and you'll see how it works. Really, really nice gadget. That is interesting. You can hold it like any other camera. The adapter lets you... Ah, it has a hot shoe? like any other camera. Oh, yeah, cool. hot flash. Light on top and everything. It even has the threading to put it on a tripod. And after it's on the tripod, then you can set up for a family photo. Aww. Say cheese. 
<laughs> that is awesome. Okay. Yeah. And Chad, there's a little uh, 60 second video from the company. So let's show that first. Uh, and then we'll talk about it. It's on my website. Um, uh, under his letter, I think it says uh, company website. You see it there? Yeah, there it is. is. Here, it, yeah. Oh, epic music. Yes, I. <laughs> yeah, having physical control over, you know, settings yes. like that to quickly. I mean, that's really what a lot of the pro cameras are all about is that you have the the physical buttons you're not you have to digging. zoom in and out I, yeah. yeah you're not digging through menus or covering up the the actual photo taking apparatus uh to to see what's going on interesting okay i like it I like okay, it. Okay, all right. Well, you don't know the price. Oh, you were right. How much would you pay? <laughs> well, what's your guess? Oh, man. I, I'm betting it's in the 60s, 60s to 70s would be my well, guess. All right. It is pricey in that regard. Okay, it's $110. Okay, huh? So it's about uh, the it's price of a... uh, It's on Amazon. Oh, it's on B. Uh, 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 B and H photo. B H photo. Uh, the reviews are pretty good. Uh, several people are concerned that they can't get their camera back out. <laughs> the, the, so I don't know if Mo has tried to get his camera out of it again. I mean, like you, I love the idea that you could run your finger over a knob and zoom in yeah. and out as opposed to trying to do it on the screen. Um, they don't make an Android version. Maybe they're working on one. So, and I think it's brand new because there's only four reviews so far. Interesting. I mean, yeah, having the hot shoe mount, having physical controls and having the tripod mount at the bottom. Those are the things that like jump out to me as, as big, big features. It may be using, you know, he was talking about some frequency that it uses to communicate. It may be just using the lightning, uh, uh, cable, you know, connector. Uh, to send um, data back and forth. Um, interesting. And, and then also it let you focus like an SRL. In other words, if you push down halfway, right. you could set the focus and then push down all the way to take the picture. Or, or do iPhones do that uh, not really. or automatically? No, you can, you can tap on the screen and it'll focus where you tapped and then you would hit take the photo. It's oh, not no, quite okay. the same. Um, okay, this makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because um, um, also, you'll normally, you know, tap the screen and then grab it again and have to kind of adjust. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I like it. Uh, it is a little pricey, but it, you know, it, it, this is something that also is like, uh, why spend twenty dollars on that camera? when most likely you have a phone that has a way better capability. Yes. And you could probably buy a $20 phone that has a better camera <laughs> than the thing that I just reviewed. Um, but yeah, I mean, most people are gonna take their phones on vacation, so they, you know, this type of accessory uh, could really help with that. I could also see, um, for someone who's visually uh, impaired, that menus on cameras are not very friendly and then having physical buttons to to know you know that you're uh you know i'm not thinking like someone who's you know blind because that'd be a little hard to take photos but you know somebody who's just you know is nearsighted farsighted so uh you can't qu quite see uh exactly yeah. no I, I don't like smartphone camera i mean i love my we shoot all our kids with videos with them uh, uh at least dennis does but if you do something wrong, you end up, you accidentally touch the screen and you're in some bizarre menu. Every once in a while, I look down at my camera and it's doing, it's taking 30 pictures of something I don't want. And that's why I, I, I often use a selfie stick, not because I want a selfie stick, but the camera is much easier to use when it's in a holder. And I'm thinking this holder, if they made one for Android, would be great 
because not only do you have an easy way to hold the camera, you have an easy way to use all the features. So on that score, I, I like it too. Yeah. And Plutonium in the Twitch chat is, is saying, it'd be cool if there was also lens attachments too. You've seen... Oh, that would be interesting. You know, yeah. if, you could, if it would extend just a little bit further so you could throw a wide angle lens on there or throw a telephoto lens on there. Um, that'd be helpful. The only thing, yeah. by the way, that I can think of with the, it getting stuck, you were mentioning that uh, yes. some of the cameras are getting stuck, is there may be a few millimeters difference between the 6S and oh. the 7. And so it may be more difficult to pull one of them out of the case than the other. I'm not sure. Because oh, I'm seeing these it, photos. That's the 6S uh, camera, phone. Because the 7 has the, uh, the double um, lenses on the, on the back of the camera. So oh, okay. That may be an issue. With that, okay. let's move on. Thank you so much. Actually, before we move on to the letter, thank you so much yes. for sending in the video. Yes, you get uh, Mad Magazine and uh, your third picture, Valfity Newman. <laughs> we do need more One videos. One for the whole family. <laughs> that's, that's right. Um, looking for more videos. Uh, we especially want videos from people who haven't sent in videos before. Uh, two to three minute video and about just about anything. Like Mo found a new gadget that he loves and thought he would share. So it can be uh, something you just bought, something you bought and hate. Don't buy that camera. Chad already did that. Yeah, please. Uh, that Vivitar. Um, something you have in the garage that, for some reason, you can't throw out. Tell us about that. Something you found at Radio Shack, and now that they're almost out of business, you can talk about something you bought at Radio Shack. Pretty much anything that involves a gadget will be of interest to Chad and I and our audience. If you're into uh, maker so stuff, maker yes. items. I mean, it, we yes, love you know, some a, of these things. A couple of weeks ago, we had the guy who took uh, those LED lighting strips yeah. and he made a moving sculpture for the wall. Yeah. That was like amazing. Uh, make a two to three minute video, put it on YouTube. There's a drop down menu uh, under upload and hit unlisted. And that way only people with the URL will be able to see that video. Uh, if you don't want everybody to uh, stumble upon it, do that and email the URL to mail at gizwiz.tv. And I think that video we just showed was the last one we have in house. Uh, so do it soon. We need uh, we need a couple for next week. Perfect. Uh, with that, let's move on to the letter. Oh, it's so quiet. I turned it down. It's like we got a jam out here. One's like, oh, there we go. Here come the letters, the lovely letters. Here come the gives with letters. Here come the gives with letters. Here come the gives with letters. And our letter is from a Patreon, Bob Davis, and it's an email we get a lot. What episode describes the studio setup about the switching software Chad uses? I think it's OBS, uh, also the Monocaster, etc. I can't find it in the show notes. So, Bob, neither Chad or I can even remember <laughs> no, we the can't. show. But... Chad has been slowly upgrading his cameras and other things into studio. So I thought he will give us uh, a little rundown yeah. of what he's currently using. I love telling people about day. the studio. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we do use OBS as a switcher, and I can switch over to it. It's going to look a little bit funky because... You're going to see it double. Oh, OBS is Open Broadcast System. I forgot what it right. is. Right, Open Broadcast Software. So Software, okay. Here it is. Ooh, double, triple, ah. Uh, and uh, over here we have uh, everything that we use to make the show. So I have, uh, this is the, our preview window, and this is what is going live which is why it's kind of doubling and tripling. It goes on into infinity there because that's what it's uh, capturing. Uh, but we have these test shots where I can see every angle and make wow. sure that everything looks good. Uh, these are our lower thirds. So anytime we bring up a lower third, it comes from over here. And uh, OBS Studio is what I'm using. And, and uh, it has some really nice features that you can 
embed, so like let's say this lower third, so you see how the H is a little bit, uh, there's a capital H. If we're going the wide shot, you can see that same thing. That's the scene of lower third over here. So if I was to bring up a lower third, uh, like uh, say Dickie D, and then look back over here at the wide, it has that lower third up now because I changed it in this scene. So you can embed its own scenes. This is new. This is a new feature of the new software when we upgraded that. Uh, but then this has every shot that we use. Uh, this is the wide, my single, uh, Dick's shot, um, the product camera, and then the PC. And now, oh my gosh, so much OBS. Um, and so that's the software. And, 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 and this, is this free? completely free would you believe it wow. that's the open that's the o part of obs is that it's an open source system and so anyone can uh you know can download it for free um, well you know i'll ask yeah. i'll ask you a question because uh several people have told me that x split is easier for a total novice to use than OBS. It Would you agree with that? Be. Yeah, there's certain things about XSplit that I find unintuitive. Um, the thing, it's, it's, it's kind of, and then of course, once you get into it, it's kind of like editing software. Once you know how to edit on Final Cut Pro, you can kind of figure out how to edit on Premiere, because you know, you know, oh, I want to do this. I just don't know how to do it in this new software. So you can Google and find things. So whichever one you start with is good. Um, okay. Now, what I'm doing also is all in what a new feature of OBS, a new ish, it's probably two years old now, uh, is called Studio Mode. Um, and that's this right here. You can see it's selected down here. If I turn that off, uh, it will show only a single screen. This is only what is live. And some people find this easier. And if I was to click any of these over here, it would automatically switch. So if I click wide, boop, it goes straight to wide without any preview. And some people find that easier uh, to deal with. You just click a thing and then it happens instead of seeing it in preview and then having to take to it and all that stuff. Um, I like that you, that you I have the option of, of uh, putting things in preview, because you can also do things like transitions. So I could fade from me to Dick, which uh, I couldn't do in, in the old version. It's also just a lot more stable. So that was one big upgrade that happened recently. Now in that upgrade, we did lose something. You may remember that I had a secondary controller pad over here that was called the Monocaster. And we did lose that. And the reason is, is because that, that was a, it was like a keyboard replacement alternative thing. It used software to emulate key presses and that did not play with the new OBS studio. Oh, I see. It, whenever, it just would not work. And so uh, what I use so that I can switch without having OBS open or having to click on the, the program to switch is I use uh, key commands, and you can set up shortcut keys. So that was what used to be set up, but we lost that in the new OBS, and now I just use the numpad on the keyboard right here. Oh my gosh. So yeah, so now the numpad has all of the different shots uh, set up right here, and so and then zero is, is what I do to take between them. Um, so we lost the monocaster, but now it's just built into a normal keyboard, uh, which is wow. really what it was before, Except that the monocaster, I could kind of place wherever I wanted my hand. Well, now to go. it's the keyboard caster. Now it's the keyboard caster. It's the key caster. Key caster. Um, so yeah. So now that's all built into the into the keyboard, which really all it was doing was is just keyboard shortcuts. Uh, and OBS is smart enough to know the difference between a keypad press, like a keypad number one, versus the number one over here on the keyboard. Um, so uh, that's how, how that's uh, able to work. So that's what we use uh, to switch the show. Uh, we're still using just Logitech cameras. Uh, they are, I think, the C920 still. I bought C922s, um, but I wasn't as impressed with those as uh, I was hoping that I would be. And so instead, those webcams can be very finicky and the C922 would require even more USB bandwidth. And so I didn't want, uh, I didn't want to uh, mess with it. I just wanted to keep yeah. the C920s. Um, and so we still use three C920s for the wide, the single, and the product shot. Uh, and then in terms of audio, 
Um, I now, this is another upgrade. I used to use a uh, capture device. Uh, you used to uh, use a Mr. Mike, didn't you? Similar. It's very. That, that it's, Mattel thing. Oh, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. And it's a little echoey, that. But, um, right, yeah. So I used to use a uh, XLR to USB converter, but now I use a H4N, which um, is a very, very, very popular uh, audio um, product. I mean, these things, these have been around forever, and um, I mean, they're... They, is, that, is that from Zoom? Yeah. This is a Zoom H4N. Yeah, okay, right. If I unplug it, we're going to lose audio here, so I'm, I'm a little worried about that, but... Um, and so what I use here, th before it was a whole pass-through thing, and now uh, I have a, uh, a plug, so it plugs into the wall, so I never lose power on it. This wow. is my microphone, and this is the headphone out that you use to monitor this system, and that goes directly into the mic cable on my PC. Uh, and this allowed me a few things. One of the reasons that I, I transferred this is because I also shoot OMG Craft in this room. And I would have to pull the microphone out of the Gizwiz computer, move it to the Zoom, plug it in so that I could record audio uh, from it. So now this system allows me to always keep this microphone plugged in right here. And whenever I shoot OMG Craft, I just come over, throw a memory card into the side of it, and then hit record on here to record my audio for OMG Craft. So that was just a convenience uh, thing that we're using the Zoom to capture the audio. And then also, uh, now I don't have to switch around microphones every time. Uh, I mean, that's once a week that I have to do that. So, and then Gizwiz. So once for OMG Craft, once for Gizwiz, moving microphones. It was just a little bit of a headache. So got rid of that. So that's audio, video, and editing. And uh, that's basically the whole show. Um, wow. Yeah, exactly. The only other yes. thing that's new, and I've kind of shown this off on the, on the show before, is uh, one downside of OBS that XSplit does have. You were talking about XSplit before, which yes. is a different uh, live switching program. XSplit has a virtual, audio, a virtual video camera. And so you can output the video that you're switching to a virtual camera that could be picked up by Skype. We use Skype to communicate uh, with me and Dick. And OBS doesn't have that. So I have to do a little bit of a workaround. And so I have to screen share whatever uh, the video is, is out uh, to send to Dickie D. And before, I used to screen share all of OBS. So Dick would see all I of the... I would see all, yes. He would yeah. see all the, all the you know, buttons at the bottom and me trying to import videos halfway through the show and just all sorts of stuff. It just wasn't all that great. And uh, so instead, OBS has a feature where you can project whatever is live to a monitor. And Skype has a screen share where you screen share everything from a monitor. So that's what we do nowadays. And I use an itty bitty monitor, which I've shown off before, and it's a, it's a little bit clunky. This was an Arduino monitor uh, that I got from a maker project. And it uses, um, I mean, it, is, it has a circuit board on the back of it. It's, uh, it's pretty small here. It's getting a little bit stuck here, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this off here. Here we are. Uh, this is it. This is the, that extra little monitor. On the back, it's just, <laughs> it's just <laughs> a little circuit board. And this monitor, it is nothing fancy at all. It you needs a little USB uh, power to power it. Um, but I use this as a third monitor, of course, the monitor I use, the monitor Dick is on, and then the monitor that we're screen sharing from and that I'm projecting the live uh, view of Someone the in the chat room is, com is complaining that we're actually teaching them something. Good! <laughs> chat room, sorry, this won't happen sorry. very often. We won't be educational in the future, I swear. Um, right. But yeah, so the, I just had that little... The equipment gets better and better. The quality of the show stays yeah. the same. Yeah. And the only other so thing that was upgraded fear. was uh, those fans that I talked about before. We used to have very loud fans in that computer. Rip those bad boys out and put quiet fans in it. So now the only fans them. we have are in the chat room. Now the only fans that we have are in the chat room. And they're very quiet. Very quiet <laughs> I hope that I know and that here was very I use long winded. And mic, a PR40, I think it is, and also a Logitech camera. Uh, and, and that's how we make LEDs television. And that's how we make television. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, well that about wraps it up. I hope, I'm sorry that was a very long-winded explanation, but Bob, I hope that you know a little bit more about us. Um, also, big thank you. Of course, none of this would be possible without our patrons. You guys make the show happen every single week. Thank you so much for supporting the show, for being so generous with us and allowing us to continue our show. We're at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Um, and uh, Patreon is a platform for you to support independent content creators like ourselves, like us. And there you go. If you're a patron and you're signed in, you get to choose the theme. You get to affect the show. And whenever we have any other uh, questions, we throw them your way, too. We haven't had a few any of those. We've been just trucking along. We haven't had, we haven't had any we existential are, no, crisis well, yeah. where we need to ask the patrons. But big thanks to you guys for supporting the show. And please, if you enjoy the show, think about supporting us on Patreon. Dot com. Also, it can we, be cheap. It can be 50 cents an episode. It, it yes, could be we're not asking for a lot here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, just, just being a patron, uh, just getting the amount of patrons that we have on Patreon up is fantastic. Um, yeah, absolutely great. Thank you so much. Uh, also, make sure you head on over to gizwiz.biz. Wait, do we get to find next month at the end of this month? Next month, but we you will when you go there, you will see a preview of the August issue, which is Ooh. the issue you will be playing for if indeed you win. Oh. Gizwiz.biz, click on what the heck is it? And that's the there what the heck is it? Is. But there is the issue you're playing for, the <laughs> August 2016, uh, 2017. We got Trump, Melania, and uh, her husband. Kushner, yes. Kushner is uh, Alfred E. Newman. There we go. Uh, Very good. (laughs) Take your kids to work every day. Every day. Not, not, Not work day, but take your kids to work every day. Very good. Very good. You guys get the swoop. Very nice. On his hair, on uh, on Trump's hair. <laughs> yes, don't we? It's yeah. very good. It's hard not to make comedy of the. Uh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> our current situation. Um, okay, uh, that about wraps it up for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you uh, you can watch live at gizwiz.tv. You can also subscribe there to the show, and also donate on uh, PayPal if uh, you want to donate there as well. Uh, see you next week. Make sure you uh, send in your videos for uh, uh, Dick's Gadget Warehouse. And uh, see you next episode. Bye. Bye.